I'm going to give a very brief overview of a tool that's incredibly powerful but incredibly easy to use for generative art and data visualization called Nodebox. Um, you can certainly use any tool that you want for your work in the Art of Data course. Um, I highly recommend Nodebox if, uh, if you're new to the practice of data visualization or generative art. And um, I'm going to go over a couple of exercises, this being you know, the first in this series of videos of uh, talking about certain uh, you know, core principles of how to, how to work with the software. Uh, so this is the interface right here. Um, the one thing that, uh, another thing, you know, if, it, if it isn't good enough software, another thing that really has in its favor is that it's free. And you can really install it and you can download it on and use it on any computer that you want. Um, the website is nodebox.net. Um, so this is the main home page, right? This is our main home page. Um, and from there, we're going to be using Nodebox 3. So this is a software that, uh, that you could go ahead and you could download from the download link. It's available for Mac, Windows, and Linux. So feel free to install it on your computers at home. Um, you can install it on other, I believe you could probably install it on other computers in the lab. Um, it's, it's, you know, it, it travels with you. So uh, when you install the software, you may be prompted to uh, install Java Runtime. Uh, it's fairly easy to step through the process. And um, what you end up with uh, by the time you're done installing is this is what you end up with is this is a this is like a base project that opens up in uh, Nodebox. So this is the interface. On the left of the application is uh, what we call your rendered view. So you can navigate this with uh, any you know, with with a couple of keyboard shortcuts. So if I press the space bar and I move around I get the the hand if you're used to Photoshop and other Adobe applications you're fairly familiar with how to navigate views that way uh, I can pan a view and look around also um, I can also use the quick click wheel to zoom in and zoom out so that's also another handy thing and again this is all stuff that you're used to if you've used Adobe products before so over here on the left is what we call the rendered view so this is the rendered visual that you'll be working with uh, it can show your view in different states of production but it can also show you the final product over here on the right at the bottom uh, we have the node view so this is really where you start stacking up all of these all of these nodes that um, to, to chain together logic that's going to build more complex visuals over here on the left so you're going to logically put things together over here and then you're going to see the final results over here on the left and work with this in different work with this view in different fashions um, up here uh, on the top right is actually the um, the properties of the node that you click on right so if I click out here in the in the dark gray area I don't have a node selected so it's not showing me any properties but if I select this rectangle node which uh, is by default in every every node node box project you're gonna see properties for this one object so I can adjust the width I can adjust the height right by clicking and dragging that number and it's pretty straightforward it adjusts it here in the render view no problems at all um, you can also type in value so if I left click in here or if I double left click in here I can type in numbers for example I can round the corners 10 and 10 I can tab over between them it's fairly handy um, and then you'll see here it's we see the updated result of that so every node down here in node box in, in, in our node view has uh, different inputs and outputs and we get really complex and interesting stuff by chaining all these different nodes together um, at the moment I only have one node but just to kind of show you the power of this tool I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to add a new node to make multiple copies of this uh, very quickly and easily so there's a button here it says new node I can click on that and it brings up this box. Also, I can double click out here in the dark gray to bring up the new node box at any time. So um, once, I've, once I've accessed this, um, there's a lot of nodes that you can work with in this software. Uh, don't be intimidated by it. Um, it, is, you know, it is a little daunting at first to have this many options, but uh, after you start getting in the flow of things, you'll, uh, you'll be able to comfortably find the things that you're looking for. You just need to remember the names of some of the nodes that you work with. Um, they are categorized, so the nice part is, is that you can go through here and you can browse and you can find uh, things by their particular use. So, for example, I can go to color and I can look at all the different color tools, but I can also go to geometry. Um, and I can find all the geometric things that we could do. For example, I can create an arc. I can create copies of geometry. I can create an ellipse. So all these uh, geometric things, I can create compound shapes, etc. So 
Uh, the thing that I'm interested in doing at the moment is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new copy node. So if I double click on that, it creates a new node down here. It's a copy node. Uh, another thing you'll notice is that this is blank over here on the left, uh, which could be a bit troubling uh, if you're not <laughs> if you're not used to this. But basically, what it's doing now is it has uh, set this up as the rendered node. So it's rendering uh, the output of the copy node, which at the moment we don't have anything plugged into it. So the output is really blank. It's nothing, right? So I can take this and I can drag it around with my left mouse button, uh, so I can organize this logically or in any ma manner I find comfortable. I can go back and I can click on my rectangle and still look at its properties. I can double click on the rectangle to add that triangle to the corner. Now it's the rendered node. I can double click on this again or I can right click to set rendered and now I'm back to this node. You can connect nodes, you can connect outputs and inputs of nodes just by left clicking on the output and dragging it to the input of the node underneath of it. So now I've connected the rectangle node to a copy node. What I'm basically saying is, hey, my base geometry is this rectangle. What I want you to do is I want you to copy that based on these properties, right? And I can really plug anything, such as our data, into any of these nodes here, or any of these inputs here. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. So I can go ahead and I can make copies of this now. Uh, right now I'm set up to do one copy, but maybe I want to do 20 copies which is all well and good, but we can't really see all 20 copies because we're not really transforming it uh, as it's being copied. So um, this is where I tell it, okay, what do I want you to do once you've made the copies? I can easily say, okay, well, once you've made the copies, I want you to move them down maybe, oh, 80 pixels or 80 units down, right? So I can easily click and drag that. And then if I navigate out, you'll see I've created this whole line of copies. Um, so if I double click on this, it just shows me the one rectangle, but if I double click on this, it shows me the rectangles with this new node applied. So I can easily see the effects of that. And then as you're working, you can tweak all of these and instantly see the results. So I can move them over and, uh, quite easily I can maybe rotate them to get this, uh, you know, I get a really interesting looking sort of a spiral shape. So it doesn't take a whole lot of work to get a really interesting looking visual. The nice part about this too is that this can be rendered, this node here can be rendered. I can still select the rectangle though and I can tweak the rectangle. So I can easily tweak the height, I can make it skinny, I can make it wider and hopefully at this point you're seeing uh, why this tool can be so powerful for working with things. Um, I can continue to kind of tweak different levels of hierarchy here to get interesting results. And then these inputs here, I can plug uh, different data into them. So I can take data from somewhere else and I can plug them into these, uh, into these inputs here. But we'll discuss that a little bit more later. For the time being though, get yourself used to the interface and uh, start you know, making some shapes, playing around with them. Maybe you want to work with the copy node a little bit. Uh, just experiment and start making some geometry. Uh, and then we will uh, we'll sync up later and talk about some other concepts.